Are you at a complete loss to understand how to continually engage and support regulation for your pathologically demand avoidant child or teen? Perhaps they have a lot of trouble getting off of screens and, and or they walk around saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, but anything you suggest doesn't seem to be appealing to them. So this is a situation that I've been in myself. Hi, I'm Casey. I'm the founder of At Peace Parents, a mom of a PDA child myself, and I've helped hundreds of parents of pathologically demand avoidant children and teens get unstuck, stabilize their homes, and find peace on their unique parenting journey. So today I want to introduce you to a lens or a tool that can be really supportive to structure your thinking and get you clarity on how to navigate situations like coming off of screen time, but also to help you plan the structure of your unschooling, or if you're not unschooling, just the weekends, which is what I do in my home. I use this way of thinking in order to make decisions. So this is also going to help you make decisions. And the last thing that it could help you with is if you yourself are a PDA parent or exploring your own PDA neurotype, this could also help you structure your thinking around how to support your own regulation. Okay, so this is called the four S's of nervous system regulation of a PDA child or teen. And I want to be specific here that this is not normative in the sense of shoulds. This is just an observation from all the different data points that I've had from working with hundreds of families and many parents who they themselves were PDA, as well as data in my own home. Okay, so the important thing to keep in mind here is we can simplify our thinking to understand that there are really only four scenarios that are going to create a sense of felt safety for the PDA nervous system. The first is providing undivided attention from another safe nervous system. So this is different than me as a mom being in the kitchen, unloading the dishwasher, responding to text, and having a neurotypical or non-PDA child come in, need help with something, maybe you know, ask me if they can have a snack, I make it for them, but then I go back to my task. Rather, this is deliberately providing undivided attention and signals of nervous system safety, which requires focus on them, right? When I'm doing this type of caregiving for my PDA child, I am not also doing laundry, trying to have a conversation with my husband or respond to texts. And yes, that is triggering and difficult as a caregiver, but I do believe that PDA is a nervous system disability, right? If you are an older PDA or this might be, it could be a friend. It doesn't necessarily have to be a parent. It could also be your partner, but being around and engaging with another safe nervous system. Okay. An observation I have is for externalized PDAers, meaning those that go more into fight flight than internalizing and turning it towards self, um, down the fawn, appeasement, freeze or shutdown pathway. These externalized PDAers like my son truly need that constant one-on-one -on -one attention from a safe nervous system. If that's not present, we have screens. <laughs> so if they're not with another safe nervous system, and sometimes even when they are with another safe nervous system, screens is another regulating state. Okay, there's lots of potential reasons for this. Um, I tend to view screens as neutral, and this is an observation. I have also observed that for older PDAers, maybe older teens, young adults, or you, if you're watching this, Maybe you don't watch a lot of screens, but growing up, you were completely always reading or engrossed in books or listening to podcasts, right? So it's focus, focus on something that is distracting from the intense nervous system experience of constantly perceiving threat and feeling that baseline of threat. If we don't have screens or safe nervous systems, 
Another regulatory state is engaging in a special interest. What's unique for PDAers is that unlike some of the stereotypes about autistic children especially, this special interest may be social in nature. It could be a fixation or a focus on their friends or a particular character in a movie. It could also be rotating. Like for example, my son has rotated through Pokemon, Beyblades, um, football, skateboarding, and he has some enduring special interests, but they did not emerge immediately. For a long time when he was in burnout, he could only access these two S's. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little image of what this might look like, but let's get through the four S's first. Four is a sensory intense experience, sorry, a sensory intense experience, dopamine or novelty. So if you're a parent who's just learning about PDA, you may have noticed that like, you know, the first time you took your child to a trampoline park or the first time you took them ice skating or the first time you went to a water slide park, they were completely regulated and engaged and seemed typical, right? But the second or the third time you went, they were, quote, back to normal or how you normally see them because they didn't have that dopamine that distracts from that baseline of perceiving threat and losses of autonomy. Okay, so how can we use this lens or tool in a way that's practical. A practical way that parents have used this is to think through this lens for setting up unschooling, for example, rather than a homeschooling curriculum where you're really just repeating all the losses of autonomy <laughs> that the school environment afforded them, right? And this is very common when a parent is switching from the lens of like sensory overwhelm and social communication differences to, oh, it was actually all the losses of autonomy because even in the home where there's not a lot of intense sensory experience or other kids, they're still having nervous system activation because they have to move through this curriculum at a certain pace according to the authority of the parent or whoever's pushing them through it. So we can sort of flip the script and think about how to incorporate this logic to structure the day of unschooling, which might be, you know, always having one-on-one -on -one availability, whether it's you or another caregiver who you can have a safe nervous system with. Maybe there's screen breaks where they can come up with ideas. They can engage in their special interests. Like my son loves to watch stuff on puppies, on football and on fishing. You could have breaks where there's an intense sensory experience where you're going out on the trampoline or you're getting to do an experiment and transforming one material state to another. And it is through these states that your child will get back into their thinking brain and have the capacity to learn. Because when they're here, no rational thought or understanding cause and effect or learning or connection or empathy can take place. That's not how the brain works. Okay, so we really still use this thinking when we're like, what are we going to do this weekend? So for example, when we're setting up ideas for the weekend, it's like, okay, which safe nervous system is going to be with our son? It might be me, it might be my husband. Now that he has more friends, it might be, oh, he's going to get to play with this friend, and that's the safe nervous system for two hours during the play date. Then we're always going to have screens available, and maybe we've planned an intense sensory experience to go to a new water park he's never been to, and we're going to bring his football and plan to pay special attention to him one-on-one, -on -one, one of us will be throwing the football. So we have all four a lot of the time, but in my mind, I'm always thinking, how are we incorporating this into our weekend planning? How are we incorporating this into thinking about what we need to even bring if we're going on an outing or a play date, okay? So the other thing I wanna say is, Often when our children are in burnout or when we're just learning about PDA, we can, they can only really access those two things. So I just want to do a little unscientific 
thing that shows like when my son was in burnout, there was a good year in there where this was screens and this was ner safe nervous system of always having to be with me, right? And now that he is out of burnout and has a higher window, a larger window of tolerance, he, it is much more like this. Screens, safe nervous system, special interest, very unscientific. But this can include the kids at school, right? So screens is now like this. And we've got special interests and we've got sensory intense experiences. So I'm just gonna draw. Okay, so if your child is here, it's okay. Or if you're a parent and you're here, it's okay. It's just a reflection of where the nervous system is, okay? So I hope that this tool, the four S's, can help you come up with your own creative strategies to really support your executive functioning and how stressed you are because I know the feeling of like, what the heck are we going to do with this four-day weekend? Or my kid just left public school and I have no idea how to structure unschooling. Like, where do I even start? And it really might start here right? And that's okay. And then you might add in novelty of like going to get a ice cream cone with sprinkles for 20 minutes, right? And then there's a tiny bit of like sensory intense experience with novelty and dopamine. And, you know, I think often the special interest is the last to emerge, but that's just anecdotal. So I really hope this supports you guys and have a good day.